All right, I'm very happy to announce we've got the, the biggest goat. of mad dogs, <laughs> sickest cunt I know, <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Slater. What's up, guys? Thanks so much, How man, for it? taking the time. Yeah, man. Man, I've watched today, like, obviously, you've won so many world titles, you've won so many heats, and the amount of attention and photos, like, you can't even get from your car to the fucking tent without having to take a photo. Yeah. And we're part of the problem. We're doing the same. <laughs> 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 we but it's that. a privilege. It's a, yeah, honestly a privilege, cool. so... Yeah, how's, guys. how's WA? Oh, it's been all right. I mean, we haven't had the greatest conditions. I think it's been like really good over here recently, from what I heard, conditions yeah. wise. And then we get here, and it's been kind of a lot of onshore and yeah. funky and small and big and too big. And yeah, there have been some wonky mornings with the ocean too. And it must be frustrating for you in a heat out <laughs> here where it's like a fucking burger, and you look over and see people getting spat out of pits. Yeah, at the box you, are you you're, kind you're of itching to, you're trying to rub it in a little bit <laughs> <laughs> no, but can you say anything like you, yeah, sure you're itching it's, it's, that's frustrating as hell because there were some really good waves there this morning and there, there was that forecast for, for there to be uh, like a new kind of little bit of west in it this morning you yeah. know like 8 foot 14 seconds or something or whatever it was 7 foot 14 but the angle was definitely changing and so it would have been good for the box with that wind forecast and everything but a lot of the people out there did say it was a little inconsistent at yep. times, so I don't know how heats would have gone, but you just go, oh, just give us 40 minutes instead of 35. Exactly. Or, you know? But, I mean, I think the, uh, I think the, as far as the people online watching and, and fans anywhere are going to rather watch us at the box and there potentially be some carnage instead of, like, trying to figure out how do I turn on this mushy section. You know, Maine, <laughs> Maine, Maine's a tough, it's a tough way, but... It's insane. a burger, let's be honest. Yeah, I mean, I have I think I caught the best wave that ever broke out there, like, eight years ago. Yep. And, <laughs> it's like um, that barrel on the right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, it was the best wave that ever came in there. It's the only but, barrel that's come through. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you but, found um, it. No, but I guess the challenge here is just to, just to pick it better than the other person out there at the time, you know. But it comes down, it really comes down to, there is a luck factor. I mean, there's a skill in it, too, but picking the right wave... And then just timing it right. Yeah. You know, I, I guess it's one of those places you got to have that little bit of local knowledge, uh, enough knowledge of the wave to know when it's going to stand up, when it's going to back off, when it's going to close out, when it's going to mush. Yeah. All those kind of things, and it's it's just a tricky wave. But if you can if you can lay down one big massive carve like John John always tends to find, you can get a big score with only seriously one turn. Yeah. Like the year sea bass one, he did. He had a wave in the final. He did one amazing turn, got a nine three three on it. I think it was. Yeah. Uh, for for the one great carve, and, <laughs> and but really, I mean, it, it, some if you can do an incredible turn, it stands out from all the other sort of ha- average turns everyone's doing. Yeah. And that's the challenge at main break. I feel like how you've kind of just you had to go through that elimination, you scrape through. It's almost the perfect way, just so you're going to be peaking at the right time. Yeah, it was good for me. I mean, I I scored better in the second heat than the first, even though I didn't score that great in either. Yeah. But I went out for a free surf yesterday afternoon, and you know when you when you when you have a few losses in a row, like great winning pipe was awesome to start the year off, you know. But yeah, to be on such a high, it's hard to be to come back down on a low and and be able to like rationalize it and yeah and um and surely you'd and like process it you, you can't like obviously yesterday <coughs> went a bit big sets on the head like you don't take that person like surely you can just brush it off and be like that's just it was personal that it, shit was personal, was man. personal? <laughs> <laughs> no i mean i i try to brush it off but for three events now i've been really out of sync yeah this, this is the fourth and it started off out of sync and it, it's frustrating when you get on the wrong side of decision making for an extended period of time yeah and um no in the big picture it doesn't really matter if you get last or first but it's it's um uh, it's the confidence that suffers a little bit when you're in that kind of losing streak zone yeah and i've just uh, and then you get in your head and then you know, even after doing it for, I mean, I've been competing for 42 years. You know, <laughs> That's you my still, age. That's what I was going to You still get in your head a little bit when, when things aren't going your way. And so I sat with my girlfriend yesterday and we talked for a while and I just said, let's just regroup. And she started kind of asking me, you know, what's going on? Why, why do you feel this way? Then we, we do, we have somebody we talk to that, that helps you know, helps us between, you know, with us like therapy stuff, but it yeah. also helps me personally because 
you just bring up your shit and talk about it, you know? Yeah. And, um, and, and she reminded me of what, what, uh, what that lady was talking to me about a week or two ago. And, um, it just kind of helped. And I, I figured you can't deny when you feel something, you know, you have to acknowledge it. Yep. But then if you acknowledge it, you don't want to get stuck in it. You just want to like acknowledge it enough to talk about it. And then, um, you either let it, you either figure out what the lesson is or you let it go. And so I said, I either got to like figure this lesson out or I've got to just go and enjoy myself and have fun. So yesterday I just went and surfed a whole shitload and, and, um, the waves weren't great. I didn't get any like amazing rides, but I had a good time and I relaxed and I went to bed and slept really well. And yeah, so I felt better today. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you, you just got to go. Everyone's got to process their own thing their own way. Yeah. I find that I'm a professional cricket coach with my job. And, um, professional what? Cricket coach. Cricket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I deal with yeah. all the cricketers coming up. And your name's come up a lot of times in terms of someone who's got longevity at the top of their game. <clears throat> so it's interesting hearing you now talk about how much you reflect. And mm. I guess my question was, with all the experience you've gained, like you said, competing for how many years, yep. do you ever find yourself being comfortable in situations you know you've been in before and you can get out of again like you draw on a lot of your previous experience to get yeah. you moving forward yeah i mean the, the probably the tightest one i can think about was a, a heated pipeline i was getting comboed score wise and needed to better both my rides i was actually surfing against a good friend of mine in timmy reyes and he had me he probably had like 17 or 18 points out of 20 and uh I took off on a left and got a 9.5, paddled back out 90 seconds later, got a 10, and he was comboed. And, <laughs> that and, is fucking ridiculous. And, huh? and it, it was, it was uh, but also in saying that, I, I had already won the world title that year. There was no pressure on me. I was super relaxed. It was in the semifinal. If I lost, so what? I made the semis. You know, so my, I was really free to make decisions, you know? And yeah. that's, that's the thing is that each person, whether they're like an alpha or they're like aggressive or submissive or whatever it is, um, whatever your personality is, you got to find a way for you to relax. And sometimes you got to be aggressive to relax and, and, and go for something. And sometimes you have to just process and accept it and, and calm down and, and, and kind of assess the situation. So for each person, it's a little different to figure out how to get to their yeah. sort of th- that flow state for themselves, you know? Do yeah, you ever so. feel like you're, like as an outsider, I know you've... C- so many times in life you've just been in the right place at the right time like Mm. obviously you helped my son and wife Sarah Um, do you feel like that happens to you like you connect maybe better with nature or like how do you how are you always there yeah it's weird I've had so many strange like some are good some are bad some are emergencies some are just like great things but uh, part of it I think is just being aware of your surroundings yeah and just being being involved with it and when, when that happens, then you, you can be like a, a part of something or assist in something or, or just experience it or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, the, the number of things that I, I had a period of time, in my late teens and early twenties, I talked to Brock Little about years ago where I was like the first person that I had on car accident a couple of times, um, multiple different drownings that yeah, uh, so I, I helped, I helped with, or just missed. I missed one at my home break one day and, and this guy drowned right in front of me and I didn't even see it happening. You know, I mean, he was underwater, so I didn't hear it. Um, I didn't hear him yell beforehand. Yeah. He was trying to help his, his, uh, stepdaughter and, um, she lived, but he drowned and the waves were like two, three feet, you know, that wasn't big. Yeah. And my friend was yelling at me on the beach and he didn't surf. He just went to the beach with me that day and he's yelling to me and I thought he just wanted to go because we've been there for so long. So I was like, yeah, yeah, one more wave. And I had a few minutes left. I caught a wave and came in and he's like, fuck, there's a guy drowning right next to you. And, and, you know, I was trying to yell to you. I was like, oh, shit, I thought you wanted to go. And my other buddy, Charlie, just happened to, he was a firefighter and he saw it and he jumped in the water and got the guy, but, and he, he worked on him on the beach, but like... I was 17 at the time. I remember kicking myself for so long. I'm like, I would have saved that guy's life without even struggling. Like, I would have just given him my board and I would have swum in. Yep. But he didn't know about the ocean at all. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, so, but kind of- yeah, so many weird situations happened to me, like, in about a three to five year period of time. I remember telling Brock, and he's like, that's crazy that all those things, he's like, that's like a lifetime of things in like a few years that 100%, happen. man. <laughs> and you yeah. experienced as a young kid. Yeah, I, I was like, you know, late teens to tw- right about 20, like the, right when I started on tour yeah. and, um, it was wild. Like one day I saw this, this accident, one night I saw this accident and I was just driving down the street. 
I was in Huntington and I was going to pick up Ross Williams in Newport and he was staying by the beach and typically you just drive down to the beach and take the coast highway and get to Newport. And for some reason I just felt like driving the car, listening to the radio or whatever. So I, I took this inline route and it, I took all these weird roads to get there. I knew the roads, but it was like the long way. Yeah. Like, it took me probably twice as long to get there. And I ended up on the street. It's actually the street that Quicksilver was on. And um, I was probably about a mile or, or so from where Ross was. I was going to pick him up. And, and I pull up to this red light. And there's a car next to me at the red light. And we're both stopped. And um, there's a car. Uh, there's these two people on the sidewalk right next to me. And the light turns green. And they run across in front of us like this. Th- through a, they ran through a red, red light. But we were, because we had been stopped, we saw them. So we stopped. But a car coming the other way, no lights on. But it was kind of a lit intersection. Um, dude just plows these two people. And they just went flying through there. It, to me, it, it looked like somebody had picked up two dolls and just threw them through the air. Fuck. Like, they just went flying. Like, the, 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 the guy just went, like, head over heels. And the woman went side over side. And they landed on the sidewalk. And um, the car next to me flipped around and chased the guy down. It was a hit and run. The guy chased him down, ran the guy off the road, pulled him out of his car, and dragged him back to the scene. <gasps> and it was a Mexican guy who might have had a drink or two, but he didn't have insurance or license or anything. He was, like, an illegal. So he just freaked out and was like, oh, shit, and he left. And I was there by myself. I was 19 years old, and I was, like, on the sidewalk with two, basically, like, I thought they were both dead. Yeah. And I was like holy shit like where do I even start and um the girl was not moving she never she never um regained consciousness and she died a week later in the hospital and uh the guy lived but his leg was broken like horribly like and and he was in convulsions and stuff so I just kind of held his head and uh, and then a few people showed up but all their friends were in the bar and there's a bar on that corner called the tiki bar and it's still there but the bar was like filled with people and a few of their friends were in there and they, their friends came out and weren't even helping and they recognized me. It was like the weird, I was like in a twilight zone. They're like, oh my God, are you Kelly Slater? And I was like, your I'm fucking shocked. friends are dying. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, and they're like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, oh. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll try and help or whatever. But they were like, it was really strange that they like even thought about like, who I might be. Yeah. That's like, I don't care if the president fucking showed up. I would have been trying to help my friends, you know? Yeah, and you were kind of in this state of light. And I was like, I was like in shock, you know, because I'm watching like, like it was, it was wild. But I, and then like, um, a guy in Mexico, I pulled out of the water that drowned like that same year. I was with Aquila Ipa. And it just all these weird things happened to me. Like you're a superhero almost. No, no I just happened to like see all these things. It's weird, man. I, di- I didn't do anything to cause or fix them. Really, I just saw it, saw them know, happen. You know? Do you know what was really weird on that third part? Like, so your story, how you guys with Van and Sarah. I remember yeah. being on Instagram back here in Perth, and <laughs> you'd put up a thing about why me being massive, and you were you paddled back in, and everyone to be safe. I got sent back in. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you were like, everyone be safe out there. This is nuts. And so I was just random on Instagram, <laughs> and that kind of stood out. And then I was watching videos of people putting up footage of the waves and then a couple of hours later Whitey's hit me up and said the gnarliest thing that's happened like Kelly Slater just saved Van and Sarah and it was this sliding doors moment that you like, it was just <laughs> bizarre that two people it was the craziest mo- like I remember it really vividly because I tried to go out at Waimea and it was like close out Waimea like really like one of the biggest days you'll ever surf it's sort of as big as you can get out there and it just I paddled out right as a close out set came in and, and I got caught my lifeguard buddy tried to pull up and let me jump on the back of his ski and he was going to like try to get me somewhere safe, you know? And as he pulled up to me, this, this, uh, backwash or like a, a chop hit me and I fell off my board and I tried to scramble on the sled and then I was trying to pull my board up. He's like, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. Cause it was like, he was having to break through a giant close out whitewash, like near the beach or maybe beach the ski. And so I jumped off to let him go. So I didn't screw his deal up. And, um, and then the next wave just like backed off and doubled up like a 12, 15 footer, there's whatever, like a big one, the shore break. And like, I just got sucked over really quick. And um, I had a float vest on. So right as it hit me, I pulled my float vest and, and it like expanded and just sent me onto dry sand, like, woof, like all the way up the beach. I was like, oh, cool, I'm good. Express shipping. But I shouldn't even, I, you know, like I just saw it as a sign I shouldn't be out there because I had a, I had had like a, like a bronchitis for like a week. Like I was like wheezing and, wasn't breathing very deeply and I remember thinking oh 
kind of relieved I didn't go out there. You know, I might have, who knows what would happen, you know, if I, if you can't breathe that good. And then I went back and I was hanging with the lifeguards at rock piles when, and it, we remembered like this set huge surge came and, um, like the water was up by the lifeguard stand and by the road and everything. Cause it was, there was a cop there that was stopping cars cause the water would f- splash up over the road. So when a set would come, he would block people from going. And, um, and I remember the whole beach sucking out and there was like a hundred yards of beach after the water had been all the way back behind me on the road. And this thing like pulled so far back out and then this huge set broke on the outer reef. And I remember just seeing it like come out the beach and we looked back and your wife and kid were, she was running the stroller, she had her headphones in. So she didn't hear and she ran by the cop and the guy didn't stop her. And then I just remember looking and seeing about like, like there was like this, the road's like, it's probably three or four times that high, like a wall, a, a, you know, like maybe it's six or eight feet tall or whatever. I remember seeing it hit that thing and just explode like 20 feet in there and just barrel her <laughs> and the kid. And I was just like, Oh shit. And me and the lifeguards, all just started running. And, um, I was thinking, cause there, like, there's a, there's a little like a sewer thing, like a pipe under the road. So water can flow back to the ocean, like from mountainside. And, in my head, I was thinking, shit, I hope, like, I really hope that stroller didn't go down over and, like, oh, getting sucked in there. But yeah. there, was a, there was a fence. A fence, I... Yeah, there was a fence, and the fence blocked it, but the stroller was upside down, and your kid was in it all sandy and didn't even, he was just like, oh, no, 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 it's all good. Like, he didn't even cry. <laughs> yeah, he's not the cutest yeah, kid ever. He wasn't even <laughs> crying. Like sand in his mouth yeah, or something. Yeah, he was just sandy everywhere. But I, like, <laughs> then your wife was in shock, and she... I, and, oh, do you know what she said? Uh, she's like, she was, like, underwater or whatever, and she just said, like she just opened her eyes and she just saw your blue eyes like right in her face she was mesmerized well we all just ran like, <laughs> but like, it wasn't I'll like, like in all honesty, like, I, didn't, I didn't do anything to save her like in all honesty like I was there for support but like me and I was there with five lifeguards so we like there was a bunch of people there whether I was there or not it should have been fine but like it was just one of those moments where she probably needed a little more comfort than anything yeah and and like maybe I was a familiar face you know she probably thought like oh maybe he knows my husband or something I don't know but, <laughs> but like she wouldn't recognize the lifeguards that worked every day yeah. but she was just so like rattled and it was so it was so spooky the timing because I'd been there for like 30 minutes and I'd seen a few waves kind of wash up and splash on the road and but then this one just went <sighs> like she couldn't have picked a word it was probably the biggest one of the, like in years that's I could tell her she's been barreled. She didn't yeah. know she's been barreled. No, she got barreled. She fully <laughs> yeah. got barreled. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I, th- I found really weird as well? Because I'd been th- we'd been there for the whole season, and mm. I, I hadn't seen you once. And then the very next day, we went to go get uh, some food at Foodland or yeah, whatever, yeah. and we ordered like a sandwich or yeah. whatever. And Sarah's like, "No, nah, no, nah, I don't want it. Like, let's go." And then she's just like, "I want to go to Halle Eva. And then we just randomly went past Halle Eva and just pulled into like this food truck place and. Uh, it was just so weird. We just like drove there and you were just sitting there on a table the yeah. next day. I was like, this is <laughs> so funny. fucking troopy. Hey, yeah, yeah, how weird. life works. Yeah. And you get time to reflect on those moments. It's weird how it just brings you together to like connect and reflect. Cause yeah. it's, a pretty, it's a traumatic experience. No, there's something to it though. Like there's something deeper where there's like, it's like music where your, your, your instruments in tune or not, you know? And yeah. like when people are, when people are in tune with their environment, they just run into each other and like become part of each other's experience or something. Yeah. That frequency. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. fuck, that was such a solid for you coming on Ninja Warrior twice. <laughs> Appreciate the yeah, support. That was, good, I, that yeah. was sick. <laughs> but, I reckon you're a chance for them to ask you to go no, on the No, they did. Show. I, I <laughs> didn't tell you. I didn't even bother that. But they, they actually uh, wanted him I'd on I'd love there. to do the course without any cameras or anything. Have you done it? I would have thought no. you were like in America. It's huge in America, hey. No, yeah, it is. I actually, like, you know, if I ever get married, that's probably going to be my uh, bachelor party is we're going to go and find a ninja course and do it. Like, oh, make, oh, all my, yeah. make all my fat out of fr- out of shape friends that are like 50. I'll just like, oh, come on. Here's and we're filming it. <laughs> the beers are at the end of the, um, yeah, end of the course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no beers if you don't get past like the fourth part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, they legit, they said, oh, do you think uh, Kelly might want to do it this year? Yeah, like, that's good. funny. You're just like, with the comps and that, you just couldn't really risk it, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you still like, do you love traveling still and coming to WA and, and getting um, waves away from the contest and just Yeah, like it? away from the contest, that stuff. Sometimes I'm at, sometimes I'm literally in heats like, fuck, what am I doing? Like, I, I just get, I'm, I, I've surfed every event I ever wanted to surf. I've surfed against all the guys that growing up, I wanted to try to aspire to, to, to beat or compete with. And, uh, the, it's different now. I'm trying to enjoy the experience and 
I mean, I won the first event of the year, so everyone was like, oh, world title this year. And it's, it's almost like that dream's other people's. Like, I mean, it'd be awesome to win the 12th, but it's like I'm not living and dying by it, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's hard. It's, I just don't have the same motivation as I had as a younger guy. And, uh, but I, th- I think if I start tasting that victory a little bit more, if I start kind of sniffing around in that top five towards the last couple of events and and um, kind of hold my ground, then maybe maybe I'll get sparked up and, <laughs> and excited for it. Did you, like, uh, you're obviously in it at the moment, but do you ever reflect on all the achievements you have accomplished? And, like, when you were a young kid, did you ever think you'd be 11-time world champ? Did you have these uh, you goals? <laughs> yeah, did you have these aspirations? Because I'm, I'm, I'm more from, like, a cricket point of view. I, a, lot of that, a lot of the athletes are big into setting goals and, yeah. and ticking them off. But I feel like a man of your caliber who's achieved what he has in the sport and transcended sort of pop culture, is mm. it something that just happened through pure hard work and you kind of, did you set yourself these goals as a young kid or has it kind of been through living in the moment and ticking there, it off, there, it's I mean, just happened? There's specific goals, but a lot of it's in the moment. But I, I felt, like looking back now as a little kid, I really felt like my life was going to be special. I just... I just knew it. That's so cool. That's cool. Yeah. I just never questioned it. I'm just like, I don't know. I, I, I just felt like I could create anything I wanted to have as a kid. I didn't understand why or how or what that meant. It just, it was a feeling I had, you know? Yeah. That is so but, cool. But, um, and I don't know why, you know, I lived in this little town that wasn't much anything and it was a kind of, uh, it was a kind of cool little spot and there was a lot of good surfers from that area. Yeah. Um, there was kind of a good melting pot of surfers from there that worked that kind of fed off each other and and um i think i think uh my mom inbred a lot of things into my uh, bred a lot of things into my head that were like do don't drink don't do drugs if you ever want to do that kind of stuff tell me like be open with me i'll do it with you my mom was like just straight as could be you know she like never drank never did anything but she kind of like she she kind of just painted the the picture and went look find one person who's like a drug addict who's really successful and and doing great things in the world and um i it it sounds stupid it sounds like weird but i had a few things like there were when i was i hit puberty really kind of late and i was like one of the smallest kids Same. at 15 16 Same. <laughs> and, and and but you know i i had a couple crushes when i was young on girls and they kind of crushed me <laughs> and and it, and it may I swear like it did something to me where like I wanted to, I'm like fuck I want to be great at something you know like oh to show that go <laughs> yeah that was part of it like when I was a little kid you know yeah so yeah. I'd want to like win things and like it it you, it put this like yearning in me to to do really well in my life and and um that those things sound kind of stupid but like one instant in your life like even something like a parent says to you or a brother or a sister like somebody in your family or somebody you care about when you're little. Like one little thing they say to you can like send you one way or the other, you know? Yeah, hundred so like, percent. It's it's I think a few of those things sent me maybe in like a negative tailspin, but I was able to like turn a positive out of it. Fuel the fire. Yeah, fuel the fire. And I but I had an older brother and we were competitive and then when I was about fifteen I made a best friend who's my brother's age, but he really liked hanging out with me and my friends. And he's like the most competitive person I've ever known in my life. And he will not back down to any challenge. And he became, he and I became like, like the heaviest competitors with each other. <laughs> and he just, he, he, uh, he just seasoned me into like the gnarliest competitor. Like, because I'd go home and he would make me cry. Like he would beat me at ping pong, pool, bowling, basketball, boxing, like everything. He just was better at me at almost everything. And but he couldn't surf. And, uh, <laughs> Got him so, uh, so well, so that thing never became. He didn't surf, but he played. He was a jock, you know. He played football and baseball and stuff. And but we'd go play like on my birthday. We'd go play every video game. We'd drive carts, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. And we we tallied up and see who won. And we used to do it for my birthday every year. It was like our challenge. <laughs> and um, and uh, he just made and and he, nobody like. My feelings got hurt a bit, but he never got his feelings hurt, like beyond the moment. Whereas my older brother and I, that competitive was like so personal and like lifelong yeah. that we like it, it was just too weird to compete with each other. But this guy, his name is Drew, and he really became that person who 
it was almost like my going to college to learn my skill to get a job, you know, and he just seasoned me. Thank God for Drew, this, eh? uh, Drew was like, yeah. Do you it, still it, in touch with him? Oh, or? yeah, he's like, it's like my brother, yeah. yeah. He's like, I, he, I just texted him with him a couple of days ago. But You're like, come to the wave pool, pussy. <laughs> 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 yeah. His, uh, his son actually had a, had a, uh, a baby with... Um, I don't know if you remember Todd Holland. He was a surfer. Yeah. Todd, Todd's son and and uh, my friend's daughter. That my friend Drew's daughter had a kid together just recently. Yeah. So it's like we're all family. That's so cool. Yeah. I always I wanted to ask as well about because you're are you the godfather of Jackson Dory? Yeah, man. That's yeah, is yeah. that trippy watching him come from that height yeah. to? It's funny too because, um, like when he was young, my girlfriend asked, "Oh, does does Jackson have a godfather or whatever?" Like just asked him. And cause she, cause she asked me, she goes, has, has uh, Shane ever asked you to be a godfather? I'm like, no, but like, I feel like I am cause I'm around Jackson so much, you know? Yeah. And so, um, Shane's like, okay, so you mean like if I die and my wife dies and nobody in the family can take care of my kid, then we need someone else. Like that kind of, <laughs> like, that's a godfather, right? And she's like, I guess I, it's just like, whatever. It's like just a friend of yours, you know? Yeah. Cause, so Shane, cause Shane's really like matter of fact. Yeah. And, and anyways, um, Shane said that, like, I used to play games with Jackson and, and wrestle with him and stuff when he was a kid. And, like, just, I w- we just would, like, I would just mess with him a lot. And I just love being around him. And so Shane just, after a few years, when he was about, like, seven, I think Shane asked me to be his godfather. Because he's just like, man, he just talks about you, like, every day. Like, he just, he just, he goes, if he ever talks about an uncle, it's always you. Yeah. He's like, so, he, like, you got to be his godfather. You got the job. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> okay, I'm in. <laughs> Let's hope nothing happens to Shane though. <laughs> that next generation of young surfers must excite you, hey, the stuff they're doing. Yeah, yeah. But I also kind of feel bad for them because um, it's so fucking crowded now. Yeah. It's just so crowded everywhere. You can't get away. You gotta, if you want to be a surfer who enjoys riding waves, like the competitive thing's one thing, but if it's like your lifestyle and, and you want to be like a good surfer and also like get to ride great waves, all the great waves are so crowded now. Pipeline and and uh, you know Bali and, and and like all through Indo. So I just think the future of of surf lifestyle is you have to have your own boat and just go sail around <laughs> the world. Just yeah. go find it yourself, you know. Well, build in it. the Pacific <laughs> in the, in, uh, in the, on the northern side of Papua New Guinea. Um, even some of the islands through Indo, you know, if you had your own boat there instead of just chartering one. Yeah. But um, there's just I, I think I, I think the the future. Well, it might be my future, so hundred percent in that. your future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've already been really like researching it for a few years now, like what I want to do. We're gonna share some spots. I've got, I've got so many spots. <laughs> You've just like yeah, yeah. Houses yeah. There, right? yeah. Fuck it, I. Um, as a fan, and I'm here, uh, and it's so crowded. I just want to surf this thing. Yeah. I'm like, I'll just go surf that thing. Surf anything. Yeah, I love Which you, got from. <laughs> yeah. um, going back to what you were saying earlier about like feeling the. Um, they think I'm pointing at the box. I'm not pointing at the box. <laughs> <laughs> it's the shore break on the rocks. <laughs> it seems like, as a viewer, like, and I know for a fact with so many guys my age, I'm only 42, you're a bit older, but whatever you do, it, for, like, you've already achieved everything you've achieved. Like all these, like winning pipe, all that, it just seems like it's just all gravy. And this, mm. I feel like because like you're achieving these things at this age, it's like every 40 year old around the world has a little bit of hope and older. They're like, <laughs> If he's doing it, like it just actually makes people realize it. I feel like that's a lot of a lot of my motivation right now because I hear so many people come up to me and are like they're younger than me, but they're like, man, I thought I was over the hill and I, yeah. I was like lazy and I gained a bunch of weight and I was drinking and you know I cleaned up and improved my diet loss. Like I got one buddy back home um, I've surfed with since I was a little kid. We don't li- we live a few hours drive from each other, but we always competed as as like Manahunis and boys and stuff. And um, he's lost 30 or 40 pounds in the past year and a half. And he's like surfing, said he's surfing better than ever. And he's, he just recently got in one of the super heats, which is like you surf your event. Whoever wins each division, so they all surf in one heat. And he beat all the young guys. Uh, and, epic, man. And, and he's just like, man, I'm just so psyched. He's like, thanks so much. Like you just, he's like, even if you don't tell me or any, what to do or anything, he's like, I'm just so stoked that what you did at Pipe. And, and he's like, makes me want to just get out and just surf my best and live my best life, you know? Yeah. And so like, that's, that's kind of enough if, if. You know, you have a couple of those. You hear that from people. It's really Man, even it's inspiring m- for me. Mr. You know? Misto, we were chatting earlier, and he was saying, like, he had, uh, I don't know if he wants me to mention it, but you reached out and you helped him with some stuff. And it's just, like, everyday mm. people, like, 
coming on Ninja Warrior for me. Like, you're yeah. such a fucking, you're the man. Good time, mm-hmm. very well. You do, yeah. yeah. Do you know what's funny? My my partner is the most English girl you've ever met. Like, she doesn't, she just thinks if you go on the ocean, a shark's going to get you. Yeah, they are. And <laughs> they're going to. <laughs> and when you watch the pipe comp, obviously the one you just won recently, she cried. Oh, really? <laughs> she cried. Yeah. Like, she was I like, this is, of... it was goosebump moments. And she was like, uh. I remember seeing Kelly, I don't know why, but about 10 years ago at home, there was a surf comp on and my dad was watching. And I go, I just like the look of that guy. I'm going to go for him. And then she couldn't believe that it was you competing at Hawaii huh. again. And she, she literally okay. cried and got goosebumps. And it was, I think a lot of people can relate to that. But oh, yeah. it turned her into like a fan. I got, I got a few hardened friends awesome. that like don't show emotion that told me, they're like, I cried when you won that yeah. thing. And I was like, man, that's awesome. I like cried a lot after that. <laughs> like I almost cry now talking about it. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's so good, man. I, I just... Because it was like so far between drinks for me, I hadn't won a contest in years since I had my foot injury. I had a really bad foot injury, and after that injury, I I actually thought I was going to retire f- forcibly, um, and uh, and but I you know the last three four years like three of the last four years of pipe I've had third place, so I'm right there. Um, bef- that's the four years before this year. Yeah. Um, so my my average there is semifinals, actually slightly better than semifinals in 30 years of surfing it. So I know, I know I can pull it out. You know, I, everyone asks me if, if anyone asks who, who asks me if pipeline's difficult, I go, you're just going straight. You know, <laughs> you're just going straight. <laughs> you know, I'm not doing. I'm, it's not a. It's not a flip with Medina and Toledo. You know, you're yeah. going straight, and I can pick the right waves, and I I know how the I know how the place works. So yeah, you know, courses horses for courses, and I, I I know what my strengths are. You know, I know what my weaknesses are, and I know I probably don't work on those intently enough. But <clears throat> I'm just not. I'm not competitively driven like I was. I'm I'm more for like the experiences now and. Those moments that happen when the waves are good and I'm in the contest, it's my place to, it's my stage, but it's, um, I, I just don't live and breathe by the competition the yeah. same way. And I really enjoy, like, I know when I'm just done competing and don't have any desire, I'll just, I, I won't, yeah, I won't be like, what sh- well, should I have? Like the things, I'm going to burn this fucking candle out, dude. It's yeah, going to yeah. be gone, you know? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but, that, but I think it is good. A lot of people are like, athletes should retire on top. Well, but you don't know what you could have done if you do that. Yeah. And if you, there's a, there's a um, what's his name? Is it Ricky Henderson, a baseball player who played all through the league as long as he could. And he loved baseball so much that he kept playing into the other leagues that aren't, they're not the top <laughs> leagues. Because yeah. he just loves to play baseball. He's like, fuck, I just want to play baseball. Yeah. Because he likes it, you know? So, um, but... You can't just go out by yourself and play baseball. You got to be on a team, you know. Yeah. So surfing, you can just surf forever. You can yeah. surf the rest of your life, no problem. Well, I heard and a saying about professional athletes. There's two sports in the world that they continue doing when they retire: surfing, surfing and golf. Surfing and golf, and you're yeah. good at both. <laughs> so you, got, you found the rest of you. Yeah, I got, my, you I got all my time covered. <laughs> but you are trailblazing. Like these sports, the vehicle. But you're you are giving people motivation to go age is just a number and you can achieve anything like even though you're doing what you love it's crazy the trickle effect of inspiration it has on people however they want to use that inspiration mm. but it has, it's a really positive thing like yeah, nice, I hope so. that's yeah, where so. the that's where your mark is left I reckon like oh, the thanks. trophies are good but it's that's exciting isn't it I, I think we were talking about I was mentioning that guys going out on top or people thinking you should like if you got on the top at the peak of your skill you have no idea what you could have done yeah you, 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 and like and, you said and, you don't want to be left wondering and, hey. and, a, and a movie doesn't end at the climax there's yep. a little bit after and and so you you got to wind things down you know the party doesn't just be super fun and and then everything's done you got to clean the thing up afterwards mm. like yeah. just life is a there's there's these highs and then you got to come back down and and, yeah. and let the whole thing process I often wonder what if Khabib will ever have that regret in the UFC. How he went Khabib? out of it. Yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah, well, I, think gonna a, I think he's going to have a. I think he's going to have a. A grappling match with um, Saint Pierre. Oh, not, an, not an MMA, but I. Yeah, yeah. I suspect he's going to. Yeah, that'd, that'd, be, that'd cool. be sick. That's been in the waiting for a while, hey. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he was thirty when he retired, and like you just, he was just getting started, really. Yeah. There's so many questions yeah. to be answered, but. Yeah, that's. I mean, he could easily fight ten more years. Uh, but someone on that record, they don't want to get a, they don't want to, uh, they don't want to one on the other side. They don't want a loss. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, 
Hicks and Gracie told me in about 2008 I should quit, and I won two more world titles after that. Quit surfing. I should quit competing. He's like, don't let these guys try and don't let give these guys an opportunity to beat you. <laughs> That's classic <laughs> yeah, crazy. Eh? Yeah. And I'm like, well, and then I saw him a couple years later. I'm like, dude, I won two more world titles. <laughs> yeah. don't quit. Like, you know, and he's like, good point. That's a good point. Yeah. You know? but, just but surfing, <laughs> surfing competition, surfing heats isn't losing to somebody in heat is not like losing someone in a grappling match. You know, yeah. when all things are even, then the actual skill is what wins. And in grappling, in jiu-jitsu, the better jiu-jitsu guy is going to win. You're not going to s- sneak something on it. Like, mm-hmm. you're not going to get lucky. In the ocean, you, you, you can get lucky to win or lose. Yeah. Um, we're lucky or unlucky. But um, in, in something like jiu-jitsu or, you know, even in MMA, luck could happen because somebody could get an injury and lose. Yeah. You know, like, like uh, Connor breaking his leg. He was losing that fight, let's be honest. But, um, you know, you can get an injury, you can get an eye poke, you can get a head butt, you can get all these things, you can break your hand and you can't keep throwing with that hand. So there's there's certain things in MMA, but in jiu-jitsu, it's pretty much like human chess. <laughs> like you're better or you're, you're either better or you're not. Yeah, it's, personal question with jiu-jitsu, because I, I do it three times a week at least, <laughs> and I'm constantly getting sore and injured. And yeah. you're... Like as far as longevity goes, you should start the, golfing. Yeah, do you reckon it's. Yeah, should start golfing. Do you how much? Often, <laughs> how often do you do jits? I don't do it very much because of that. I love or? it. Um, I had a couple like I had a rib injury and I kind of busted my mouth one time, just like heads clashing, and um, I had a little knee thing that happened, and I was just like, because mm, I, I just go a little too hard. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm my technique's not perfect. I should probably do more privates. But so maybe just do more privates and less rolling with a group. Yeah. Yeah. Good advice. <laughs> Dodge your shoulder, crosses over to golf. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I should probably run though. My girls over there. Man, yeah, I appreciate it so much. I know, yeah, you've, everyone wants a piece of Slater. And yeah. the fact that you give so much Slater to everyone. Cool, man. You're the biggest fucking legend ever. Thanks so much, right, man. man. Good, Good luck for the rest of it. Man, yeah, yeah hopefully we'll be, I'll, I'll, I don't know if Buddha will make it back down, but I'm going to come back down Tuesday. Yeah. So good luck and cool. I'll be rooting for you. Yeah. Yeah. So the rest of the world. Thanks, guys. Peace.